Hi everyone, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf. In this video we are going to be talking about some amazing, superb, phenomenal products. Although these have been out on the market for quite some time, I've only just recently tried them and now I am kicking myself for not trying them sooner. They are out of this world. So, if you're interested in hearing my thoughts, definitely stick around if you are new here. Hi, my name's Gemma. I upload two to three videos here on YouTube every single week. I'm also on Instagram if you fancy checking me out over there. And I would really appreciate it if you would come and join the best subscribers in the entire world. Click on that subscribe button, also the notification bell, so you don't miss any future uploads. Let's get on with it. Okay, so firstly, you all know that I love myself a really good sunscreen and I buy sunscreens that are affordable and really expensive. I don't really mind spending money on items that are going to protect my skin and are good for my skin. However, I get asked all the time, if you've got a full face of makeup on, how do you protect your skin from the sun damage? And uh, usually I will point them in this direction. Now, this is from Kate Somerville. I've mentioned this on my channel before. Use this all the time. However, not so great for people with an oily skin because this can make you look a little shiny the more you use it. This is where this next product comes in. I absolutely adore this and it is a fraction of the cost. This is from La Roche Posay and it is the La Roche Posay Anthelios Anti-Shine Mist in an SPF 50. This is invisible, it's effective, it doesn't disturb my makeup and most importantly for those with an oilier skin, this is anti-shine. It's got such a fine mist, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. So like I said, this does not disturb my makeup. My makeup still looks as good after I've had this on for a good couple of hours as it did before. Now this primarily is just for over makeup. If you don't wear makeup, I would always recommend that you apply your standalone cream or liquid SPF to your skin to top up your SPF throughout the day. It's not going to disturb anything, so it's the safest way. You can really judge how much you're applying to your skin, so you'll get the best protection. This is just for makeup wearers, so if you don't want to take your makeup off, to apply that liquid or cream SPF to your skin and then reapply makeup, this is a good way of doing it. It's very difficult to ascertain what level of protection you will get from this because obviously you can't judge exactly how much you're applying to your skin. So um, I would tread cautiously that way, but if you have absolutely no intention of removing your makeup throughout the day but you want to protect your skin, this is a really good way of doing it. You need to bear in mind you're probably not getting that 50 plus protection but it's definitely better than nothing. I really like it. Okay next. This is an item that I have on today. It's from Lancome and it's their Lancome Miss Your Big Mascara. This is a goodie. Now, I still use two mascaras. I use a lengthening mascara and I tend to use a volumizing mascara on the top of my lengthening mascara. And um, this has taken over. <laughs> this has a tiny piece of my soul. It's so good. You don't have to use two mascaras with this mascara. You can just use this mascara if you don't really want the faff of applying two different products. But uh, it really does layer well on top of other formulas as well as just singularly on its own. It's amazing. And it doesn't clump my lashes up, which I like. So I only have one coat of this on and one coat of my lengthening mascara and my lashes look long, fluttery and chunky without looking clumpy. Definitely one of my recommendations. I have no idea why it's taken me so long to try this out. Moving on. Okay, this next product is a bit of a game changer for me. So if you are a regular to my channel, you will know that my favorite concealer of all time is the Pat McGrath Sublime Perfection Concealer. I adore it. It is phenomenal. It's really good coverage. It just covers, covers, covers. 
and it blends out really well. The only thing I don't use it for is when I just want to touch up those dark circles, but I don't want anything else on my skin. So if I'm having a no makeup day, but I just want to brighten up my under eye, I tend not to reach for that concealer because it's slightly too much coverage and slightly too heavy for that purpose for my personal preference. This is where this next concealer comes in. It's a beauty, it's an absolute beauty. And I thank each and every one of you that's recommended this to me in the past because when I got my hands on this and tried it for the first time, I was blown away. This is from Kosas and it is the Kosas Super Creamy Brightening Concealer. Unbelievable. So this has a lot of coverage to it as well. I wouldn't say it was on the same level as the Pat McGrath for coverage, but it's so, so close, really, really close. And the good thing about this is it melts into the skin. So it's not only a great concealer for when you've got a full face of makeup on and you need that coverage, it's also great for those days where you don't want to wear any makeup, but you just want to brighten up your under eyes. It will cover, but it will look natural and it doesn't crease on me. I had this on all day without even powdering it in place and it only creased the tiniest little bit over here and I feel like I probably didn't blend it out very well on that day because, I mean, I do powder this in place just to be sure because I don't want to be looking in the mirror all day, but it's amazing. For those of you who are my shade twin, I have got the shade 2.5C. It's got a slight pinky tone to it, which really helps cover my under eye circles up. This is pretty spot on for my natural skin tone. I absolutely love it. Multi-purpose, can wear it in so many different ways. And uh, yeah, win-win, tick tick. Just a little bit of added info for those of you that want the similarities and differences between the Kosas Creamy Concealer and the Pat McGrath Sublime Perfection Concealer. The Pat McGrath is really quite matte. It's super, super coverage, but a lot of people can find it slightly drying underneath the eye. I personally don't find it drying at all, but I do know that a few of you have said that although this might not dry out your under eye, it might look a little bit dry underneath the eye. The Kosas Creamy Concealer is slightly more lightweight. You're still getting that coverage, but slightly less coverage than the Pat McGrath. This is far creamier. It's more hydrating, it's more nourishing, and it's not as matte. So it does have that slight sheen on the surface. It's more of a natural matte than an ultra matte. So they are the similarities and differences, both great coverage. But if you find the Pat McGrath a little too drying, I would definitely recommend this one. This one also blends beautifully into bare skin, which I don't feel like the Pat McGrath does as well as the Kosas. Mm. Moving on to the final product in this video. This is just phenomenal and I'm feeling a little bit silly why I never tried this when it first came out because this has been around for years and years. This never sparked my attention. It really didn't, I wasn't bothered. And then one day I think Cult Beauty had a sale on and I thought, well, why not? It's, you know, it's a lot more affordable. Let's try this out. And it came and it still didn't spark my interest. It got put in a drawer. <laughs> and then the other day I just thought, let's just have a little play around with makeup. And I got it out of the drawer and oh my goodness. This is my new favorite. It's from Anastasia Beverly Hills and it is her Dip Brow Pomade. This is in the shade Taup and oh, this is gonna last me for years, years and years. One, it's cool toned, which I love absolutely love. You can really deepen this off. You can have it so that it's faded out. 
I adore the consistency of this product. It's not sticky, it's not hard, it doesn't cling to dry areas, it doesn't cling to brow hairs in a way that once it's on you can't move it. So easy to use and I think that's what I was frightened about because the other brow pomades that I've ever used have been very affordable brow pomades that weren't very easy to use and did cling to those areas and I just thought I can't be doing with this it's not easy enough for me and it's taking me 10 times longer than it would with a normal eyebrow pencil. You all know I adore the NYX microbrow pencil and I still adore it nothing wrong with it however this has taken over. I know it's not an affordable product but I will use this so often I just adore it, absolutely adore it. So it comes in so many different shades. If you're not my shade twin, you can get it in lots of different ones, but it's such good quality, really good quality. Now I got it with an application brush, which I can also recommend. This is the ABH Brush 7B. So it has the best fine ended brush. It's a little dirty now because I have just used it. And it also has a spoolie on the end, which you can have straight if you want to, but I prefer it bent so that I can really dip it into my brow freeze and really help style my brows. So I find it easier to have it like this, but you can have it straight if you want to. Such a good quality brush. I have other brow brushes, but they are nowhere near as good as this one. So again, definitely recommend it. So that's it for this video, really short and sweet. I hope you've enjoyed it. Have you tried any of these products already? What are your thoughts? Do you love them? Do you really not get on with them? Let me know your thoughts and experiences in the comments section and I really hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.